Tovalea Nachmani from the Pardes Institute in Jerusalem. I'd like to share a thought with you today about the Haggadah. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to tell you about one of my worst Seder experiences and one of my best. One of my worst Seder experiences was one year when I prepared this very elaborate, very well thought out commentary ideas about the four sons, the four children in the Haggadah. And I was so excited about it. And I set up a ladder in the middle of our living room, and on each rung of the ladder, I placed a different object that was representative of something that I was going to be talking about during, during uh, my presentation. And I looked forward to this throughout the whole Seder when it really came to be my time to present. I got up with enthusiasm, and I was telling my bit, and I was looking at the people around the table, and I noticed that nobody was really listening, and nobody was really interested. And I realized that I'd made a terrible mistake. I realized that I had just sort of put myself on stage and with a certain amount of ego came to present you know, my great ideas that I had learned from this commentary and that commentary about the Haggadah. That was one of my worst Seder moments, probably for the people who were also at the Seder, but definitely for me. One of my best Seder moments was a spontaneous moment that happened when our children were younger and our youngest daughter, who at that time was five years old, was going to ask the Manishtana questions. How is this night different than all of other nights? She climbed up onto a chair in the middle of the living room and she sang in this beautiful sing-songy voice, Manishtana, Halayla, Zemi, Kol Alelot. How is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights we eat chametz v'matzah, and this night we eat only matzah. And she went on and on to ask the questions and to answer the questions. And when she finished, she was so proud of herself and everyone around applauded for her and said, way to go, kol kavod. She got down from the chair and something in me felt like we just missed the point. So we gave her all the credit that she needed to get. And then I climbed up on that same chair and I said to my family, who was looking at me in, in wonder of what, what I was about to do, I said, I have another question. I have a question about I have a real question. My question is not how is this night different because honestly this night is really like every other Seder we've had. Same matzah, it's the same four cups of wine, it's the same story, nothing's changed. But my question was how have we changed? Because really only if we've changed does the Seder become a new experience. In the Seder Haggadah itself it says Chayav in every generation, a person must see themselves as if he or she came out of Egypt. And Rambam adds, as if at this very moment this person came out of Egypt. When I stood on the chair, I said, what's different about us? What's different about each one of you? And I got down off the chair and we sat around in a circle in the living room and we talked about it. And each person made a suggestion about something that was different about another person in the room. And each person in the room was able to talk about themselves and something small that had changed for them. It could have been a personal transformation, it could have been a technical transformation. One of my children learned how to ride a bike. One of my children had learned how to read. One of my children had gotten a new job or had enlisted in the Israeli army. And everybody had their own something that was new and different about them, something that made them feel more adult, more mature, more experienced, more engaged with the world, with other people. And that was really the finest moment of our Seder. And it started with a question. It started with a question, tell me about yourself. The question led to stories. People told stories about themselves. And from the stories, I asked everyone to think about who helped you. Are those stories really stories just about yourself, where you have the stirring role, or were the people who were your supporting actors, or the people who helped you, who gave you an opportunity, or who perhaps pushed you, pushed back about something that you did or that you said, a person who challenged you, or a person who supported you in some way? Who were your various supporting actors in that story? And to what extent was God also a supporting actor? It's ironic that in the Passover story, God is like the main character. And God brings us out of Egypt, and we're really quite passive. But in life, God enables us to be the main actors, as it were, and God is our supporting character. So I want to just finish by saying that 
in my own life this year, I, I asked myself that question and how I really have become a different person. In what way am I different this year? So I've really tried this year to open up and be a better question asker, to be able to ask questions that are more open-ended. Someone particular in my life who I encounter almost daily, who I haven't had very much contact with, very much authentic contact with, and this year I made it a point to ask more open-ended questions, to share my own stories, to listen to her stories, and to give each of us space to talk about who our supporting actors and actresses have been in those stories. If you're interested in seeing a chart, full-color chart, to see how the structure of the Haggadah, at least of the Magid part of the Haggadah, the story of coming out of Egypt, is divided up into three explicit sections, questions, stories, and praise, or compliments, or credit, giving credit to the people who are supporting actors and actresses. So you can stay tuned, and you'll see a chart that uh, lines up, that outlines that those ideas for you. Hakashir Vasanah.